Assalamu alaikum ladies and gentlemen, assalamu alaikum boys and girls. Welcome to a very special episode of the of the uh where am I? What what, what are we doing? What, what was it? Oh yeah, that's what I'm doing. Welcome to a very special episode of the Raw Islam podcast. I am your co-host BC Dodge and we are excited to be here this evening as we explore as we explore the dark Secret side of the Moon Wars. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know the Star Wars. And with about. that, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the hardest working Imam that I know, Imam Azhar. Assalamu alaikum. Greetings of peace to all of our listeners. Thank you once again for tuning in on a Tuesday evening and spending some time with us. I don't want to say quality time because between Carl and I, uh, there is a quality uh, deficiency. Uh, so we thank you once again. Uh, welcome to our Ramadan episode or pre-Ramadan episode. It really goes down to when you feel Ramadan begins. Carl, I'm going to throw it over to you. Tell us, what's your thoughts? It's Ramadan right now. It, like as we speak, it is Ramadan. Makrib, the call to prayer for Makrib just went off on my neat little computerized thing over there, because because I am one of those weird weird people that puts faith in technology and puts faith in algorithms, and so Ramadan has started because the computer said so. <laughs> Well, I disagree. Ramadan has not begun. There's still 24 hours to go, actually 23 hours and maybe 48 minutes. And that's because uh, this is a continuous problem, Carl. I believe it's not because the moon hasn't been sighted as yet anywhere in the world. And uh, based on the weather outside uh, and the storms that we're facing here on the East Coast, the storms that are uh, down south in Chile, uh, it's highly unlikely that the moon will be seen. But Carl, like, this is something that you and I could debate forever. Don't don't you think so? Absolutely. And I think it was was it last week that I told the story of 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 when I of like the first Ramadan after I converted. Mm -hmm. And it was a 3-day war and it was a 3-day conversation. My wife, my wife and her friends, my wife's friends, she's known them for for 30 tw tw yeah, 20 30 years. And the families, they were, no, Ramadan started, no, 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 no. And it's like, yo, and I, you got to remember, I'm a new convert, never experienced Ramadan before. And it was, no, no. And I'm like, what is happening? And then Ramadan hit and everybody was happy and we all moved on. And then the next Ramadan came and it happened again. And I'm like, yo, why is this a continuous thing? We have algorithms. We have science. We have telescopes. Why do we continuously argue about this? Well, in the, in the midst of all our algorithms and our technology and all our predictions, uh, you know, sometimes it doesn't work out. But, you know, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, made it simple. You see it, you do it. You don't see it, don't do it. It's as simple as that. But, you know, we are the ones who want to complicate religion and bring every other angle of approach into it, which is perfectly fine. This is a war that I fought for many years as an imam, and I'm glad I wasn't fighting it this year, nor did I fight it last year. Uh, but the interesting thing was I did start up a little thing on Facebook and it actually became a problem for the whole course of the day. Uh, and at the end of the day, Carl, moon or no moon, Ramadan or no Ramadan, we are still Muslims, we're still humans, and we still need to be civil with each other. And I think these pre-Ramadan fights indicate or highlight exactly how much effort we need to do on ourselves in order to restore civility, in order to restore human conduct, uh, character to restore uh, morals and ethics, something by this time of the year, if we were building off of, or if we were living off of the energy of last Ramadan, we're kind of in the negative now. So it's time to kind of really take it up a notch and um, fix things. But Carl, you know, put the moon wars aside and the Star Wars, Star Wars I don't know how many they've made by now. Uh, the question is, there's more bigger things that, you know, kind of, dampen the mood and uh, overtake the media. Uh, things like what happened yesterday and today in Palestine, um, 70 years to the date of um, a speech given uh, when Israel became a state. Uh, 
the day after which was the Nakaba. And America declared Jerusalem the capital of Israel. Now, I don't want to get into politics. And if you have been following me on Facebook, I haven't directly got into this. But I want to talk about an angle that I feel is relevant to all of us, regardless if we follow this or not. I'm not going to talk about regardless what your position is on this. But regardless if you follow this news or not, um, I think it's relevant with Ramadan, especially for the Muslim folks out there that are listening. Now, 70 years ago, a speech was given yesterday, 70 years ago yesterday, wherein um, Israel was born and where a speech was given. Not that I'm, I'm not talking about the Belfort Agreement. I'm talking about a speech that was given 70 years ago that had promised to bring forth equality, racial and religious uh, freedoms, uh, humane treatment, uh, opportunity for all, regardless of these things. But right now we see that that isn't happening yet, unfortunately. I'm not here to judge people's intentions. I'm not here to judge the intentions of the Palestinians or the Israelis. But we're not there yet. You know, uh, with 46% unemployment in Palestine, electricity only four hours a day, water which is scarce, resources which are limited, um, I think the dream that was 70 years ago is not yet come to fruition. So I feel that this move, uh, not saying I'm justifying it or I'm, I'm, I'm agreeing with it, or nor am I going to say I disagree with it. I'm just going to say was premature. And it has sparked another, yet another distraction in the holy month of Ramadan, which I think we've been accustomed to uh for the last couple of years, Carl, every Ramadan, there's some distraction. Do you agree with me? So I, I, I don't want to say yes, 100%, but mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's, but I will say that I was carrying this conversation with my wife last week. Mm -hmm. There was some stuff that happened in our professional careers mm -hmm. and we were in the middle of a conversation and I stopped and I said, yo, you know what? I feel like, you know, 10, 11 months ago, we were carrying this exact same conversation about something different. Mm -hmm. And then I thought about it and I was like, and I think we did the year before too. And I, 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 I said to her, I said, why is it that every Ramadan or before Ramadan really there seems to be something. Mm -hmm. It's just something. And, and and I asked her specifically, I was like, is is this because, you know, the, the devils and the jinn, they know they're going to get locked up, so they're just throwing a temper tantrum like a child before you send them to their room? I, I'm like, well, why, is, why does it feel that every Ramadan there's something? Mm -hmm. And that's my feeling. I can't <coughs> see with certain uh, and point out exactly what day what happened that became the distraction that Ramadan. But I, I, I feel for the last at least eight to 10 years, every Ramadan, something's happening either before, during, or close to the end of it that kind of distracts people. And what's happening is that we all feel the need to do something. Now, I'm not here also tonight to question what a person should do or not do or how a person should do it, because some feel the need is to go out this weekend and protest about uh, the capital being taken over uh, to Jerusalem. Uh, well, sorry, the capital of Israel being declared as Jerusalem and the embassy opening in Jerusalem. Uh, we're going to go protest. You know, uh, we're going to go write letters. We're going to make phone calls or we're going to go to the media and talk about this or we're going to educate people about this. Let me get to my point, because many of you might think I'm getting vague here. Yes, I'm not going to talk about the justification or the, uh, uh, the legitimacy or not of this move. I'm not going to talk about the timing. I'm not going to talk about the two-state solutions. I'm not going to talk about if the Israelis and Palestinians could live together. But what I'm going to talk about is, have you noticed that recently in your life, if you take yourself to be a cell phone, a cell phone that has maybe in my phone have like 98 apps, so imagine every app being actively open. I have two G GPS. I have the Google Maps and I have Waze. So I got those open also. Both are speaking at the same time. 
and my Skype is open. My WhatsApp chat is open. Everything is open. Just turn everything on right now. And your phone is overheating, number one. Number two, it's becoming a discomfort to hold on to. Number three, your battery is depleting fast. And number four, you're frustrated. Take these four points. By now, from last Ramadan to tonight, which according to Carl is Ramadan, according to me, I still have 23 hours and change left. So I'll be eating sushi tomorrow afternoon and pasting it, posting it on Instagram and saying, Carl, how's your fast? Joking, I don't eat sushi, nor would I post my pictures of eating food. So I apologize for saying that. But this is exactly what's going on. We have become overused, overexhausted, over over exhausted basically and we don't realize there's nothing left in us so even if we go out on the streets even if we go make those phone calls even if we go and 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 get on twitter wars forget moon wars we could go on twitter wars guess what there's nothing to give so what ramadan is it's about 30 days of closing those apps number one number two 30 days of taking away the things that you didn't need. Hey, I didn't need that app. Why do I have like three different uh, cinema apps on my thing? I think AMC is good enough, so I'll keep AMC and I'll get rid of Regal and the other ones. Just seeing, for example. Or why do I have uh, two navigation systems? I'm going to turn one off and just keep one on. So when you start closing, deleting, restructuring, and recharging, closing, deleting, restructuring, recharging. These are the four things we need to do 